Hi everyone, and welcome to Booked Up, a TV show featuring the adult collection and programs at the Peters Township Public Library. My name's Diane Finnegan, and I'm the Circulation Manager. And I'm Mary Kipling, Head Cataloger. But Diane, I'm worried. Why are you worried? Do you have stage fright? No, I'm just worried that we're starting this new show, and the library already has a show on public TV. It's called Book Buzz with Miss Shannon and Miss Linda. It's an award-winning show, and it's a ratings blockbuster. <laughs> what awards have they won? Uh, I don't know, a daytime Emmy? <laughs> there are no daytime Emmys for public access TV, and they can't track the ratings e either. Um, Book Buzz, they, talked about, they talk about the children's programs uh, in the children's department at the library and all of their new books and programming. Shannon and Linda are super popular. That children's stuff is way cuter than our stuff. Hey, we're pretty cute too. But we want to talk about things um, for the adult tax-paying citizens of the Peters Township. And we want them to know that we're working hard to bring them interesting books, programs, and entertainment. We want them to stop in the library and take advantage of everything we have to offer. That's true. Oh, I know what time slot we're going to win with this show, though. <laughs> Which one? 3 a.m., the insomniac hour. Well, I know I would probably be up watching then, but this, pro this program will be shown at various dates and times. Okay, let's get on with the show. Why don't you talk about the new and upcoming books? Well, I'll begin with the ubiquitous James Patterson, and here's uh, one of his latest, Things I Wish I Told My Mother, and it was co-written with his daughter and with another co-writer. Patterson publishes about 20 books a year, and he has two new ones coming out in June and two coming out in July. In June, there'll be a new release of the Alex Cross series and also the latest in his private series. And in July, we will see uh, the new installment of his Shadow series and also the uh, latest drop of the Michael Bennett series. And seriously, Diane, that's too many series. <laughs> well, it's too many, too many, James Patterson I know, novels. too many books for one author. <laughs> Unfortunately, we are running out of room in the library for his books. Uh, we might have to put a James Patterson wing onto the library. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, Besides James Patterson, there are many more popular authors, so let's take a look at some of the book covers for those. The Survivor by Iris Johansson. Near Miss by Stuart Woods. Who died recently? <laughs> yes, actually. He's writing from the grave with a, a co-writer named Brett Battles, and this will be um, Stone Barrington number 64 oh in the my. series, and I read that the publisher is planning number 65. Okay. So no word about uh, what will actually happen to the Stone Barrington Private Eye character, whether he'll die in number 65 <laughs> or not. An Evil Heart by Linda Castillo. She's a very po popular author with our PTPL readers. And then we have Zero Days by Ruth Ware. The First Ladies by Marie Benedict. Oh, she has a co-writer again this time, Victoria Christopher Murray. Marie Benedict is a local author and she writes biographical fiction and her stuff ends up on the mm -hmm. bestseller list. Yeah, we actually got to meet her when she came and spoke at the library. It was yeah, really that exciting. was a thrill. Uh, then we have Lisa Jackson's The Last Sinner. And next we have The Ninth Man by Steve Barry. And Too Late by Colleen Hoover. It's never too soon to get on the holds list for that. Yes. Um, and then Deadfall by Brad Thor. And next, After Death by Dean Koontz. Isn't he one of your favorite authors? He is, he is. And the character, the lead character in his new book is described as somewhat of a Lazarus, so I'm excited to read that one. Somebody Rising from the Dead. Yes. Eh? Uh, the Collector by Daniel Silva, and then rounding out July, Prom Mom by Laura Lipman. Summer reading <laughs> means beach reads. And how do you know it's a beach read? Well, this is a uh, situation in which you can judge a book by its cover. A beach read will have uh, usually a woman in a bathing suit, 
uh, lounging on the beach <laughs> in front of a body of water. Mm -hmm. uh, she might be wearing sunglasses and a floppy sun hat, uh, may even have a fizzy cocktail in her hand, and flip-flops are usually involved. But most of all, it will have a beachy title, and I think here's my favorite for this summer. Uh, this comes out in June, Beatrice Williams, The Beach at Summerlee. Can't get any beachier <laughs> than that. No. And here are some more beach reads for your actual or mental vacation. We'll look at the book covers for those. Happy Place by Emily Henry, Kristen Higgins' A Little Ray of Sunshine, Summer at the Cape by Rayanne Thane, and then we have Big Gay Wedding. Now this one actually has tuxedos rather than bathing suits on the cover, <laughs> but it, it is a beach read. Ellen Hildebrand, The Five Star Weekend. We have at least 15 previous beach books. She does like one oh, a summer, I doesn't love her she? books. Uh, so if you can't get They're your the hands. They're perfect summer read. That's right, so if you, well, you can see she's uh, ticking all the boxes <laughs> for the beach read cover. Um, if you can't get your hands on this particular one, you have those other 15 from previous we years. Do. You, you can read yes. the back list. And then we have The Happiness Plan by Susan Mallory. And uh, then Welcome to Beach Town by Susan Wiggs. The Bookshop by the Bay. Oh, this author knew, Pamela Kelly. She knew what she was doing in naming the book because that ticks the box for beach and, <laughs> and book lover with a bookshop in it. And then the ever-reliable Danielle Steele with Palazzo. And then we have The Sunset Crowd by Karen Tanabe. The Summer Girl by L. Kennedy. And finishing up with Jenny Colgan, The Summer Skies. Besides cataloging new books, my department deals with uh, dirty and damaged books, and you can tell that it's beach season when the book comes back with actual sand in the book jacket. <laughs> and it'll smell like suntan lotion, and someone will have spilled that fizzy drink on it. Well, we can clean everything <laughs> except for the fizzy cocktail, so you all be careful out there. Um, lastly, for nonfiction books, celebrity uh, biographies and memoirs are the... Uh, brain candy uh, for the beach for nonfiction. Uh, like Tell Me Everything with Minka Kelly. And uh, we've also heard that, um, and here a, a Swifty alert, <laughs> uh, we've heard that uh, uh, Taylor Swift herself may be dropping a memoir in July. They say it's rumor, but uh, stay tuned. It That's might just right. happen. And in the meantime, you'll need to read some other celebrity titles, so let's take a look at those. Love, Pamela by Pamela Anderson. Spare by Prince Harry. Yes, this came out a few months ago, but we predict it will still have legs and still circulate a lot this summer. Bad Mormon, a memoir by Heather Gay. Apparently, she's one of the real housewives on TV. And then Paris, the memoir by Paris Hilton. Honey Baby Mine by the daughter-mother actress duo Laura Dern and Diane Ladd, LeBron by Jeff Benedict, and Page Boy by Elliot Page. That's it for what's uh, new in the cataloging department, Diane. What's new for you over in the circulation department for summer? Well, you definitely have the reading portion uh, covered for us this summer. I'm going to focus on some um, mindless forms of entertainment. Uh, let's talk about some blockbuster movies that are coming to the library on Blu-ray this summer. Did you know that we order all of the popular movie releases? Um, here are a few that will be hitting the library shelves this summer. If you miss them in the theater, you can check them out for free at the library. Uh, John Wick Chapter 4 is set to be released to Blu-ray on June 13th. In this latest addition to the popular film franchise, John Wick is back with a plan to earn his freedom after being condemned to a life on the run by the high table. But before that can happen, he must face off against a new enemy with powerful alliances across the globe. Keanu Reeves is a man of few words, but he sure is nice to look at. Lots of action, blood, and violence can be expected. Next up is paint. Well, does this remind you of anyone? <laughs> Uh, this comedy starring Owen Wilson is coming to DVD on July 25th. Paint tells the story of Carl Nargle, Vermont's number one public television painter. Carl has it all, a signature perm, a custom van, <laughs> and fans hanging on his every stroke. 
That is until a younger, better artist steals everything from him. Though certainly not a biography of Bob Ross, Wilson's performance is part tribute, part caricature of the late Ross. Um, the Covenant is a movie that's taken right from the headlines of last year. In this movie, Jake Gyllenhaal plays the role of U.S. Army Sergeant John Kinley. Um, Kinley is pulled from Afghanistan, um, and his interpreter and um, family are left behind despite being promised safe passage to the United States. Sergeant Kinley heads back into danger to fulfill his promise. The Covenant will be available at the end of June. Probably the most highly anticipated Blu-ray release of the summer is Avatar The Way of the Water. Avatar was nominated for Best Motion Picture in 2023 and won the Oscar for Best Achievement in Visual Effects, as well as more than 60 other awards. If you missed this visual stunner at the theaters, check it out, close the blinds, put it on your big screen, and lose yourself in the world of Pandora. Uh, another resource that uh, adults may not know about is our adult video game collection. Um, we have video game, popular video games from um, all of the systems, the PS5, Xbox Series One, um, Switch, uh, just a few that we recently got um, were The Last of Us, which was based on um, a very popular HBO series. It follows the journey of Joel and uh, Ellie through a ravaged civilization where the infected and hardened survivors run rampant. Mm -hmm. And I actually saw the series. It was really good. Um, I don't play video games, but I'm sure my kids would like that one. Um, we also have um, Grand Theft Auto. This is the trilogy. Um, all of the graphics have been updated. Rockstar Music, Three Cities. This will be a fun one. Um, and then another really popular game um, based on book series and the Netflix series is The Witcher. This is The Witcher 3 um, Wild Hunt. And this game won more than 800 um, gaming awards, including several Game of the Year awards. Um, the library actually has over 700 different video games. Wow. Um, they check out for a two-week period, stop over soon, and browse through our collection. It's great to know that they actually have a literary background, some of these games. Yes. We like that at the library. We do. Hi, this is Sydney from the library. I'm the program and outreach coordinator, so I help plan events for adults. So we're gonna look at some of our upcoming June, July summary events for adults and a few for teens and adults this summer. Um, first, if you wanna look at our online complete event calendar, it is on our website. If you go to ptlibrary.org slash events, you'll be able to look at our full calendar and uh, sign up for events on there. This is just a sampling of some of the things that we have coming up this summer. So we have some PTPL sponsored clubs. Um, we have 10 clubs in total that meet at the library every month. The only exception to this would be our uh, Lens Shooters Photography Club. They only meet during the fall and winter months. So they have a summer break for uh, June, July, and August, and they'll be back in September. Our other clubs have a variety of different interests that they cover, including photography, um, crochet, we have a coloring club, a genealogy club, stamp, and World War II discussion group. In June, our Roots Genealogy Club will actually have a guest speaker, Linda Reese, who will be talking about the history of tombstones and cemeteries and what you might um, be able to discern by just looking at a tombstone from its history um, or the importance of uh, the different features on it. And then our World War II group has a different topic each month that they discuss and they have already started planning um, their Remembrance Day for next summer. Next summer will be the 80th anniversary of D-Day. 
We also have four book clubs that meet at the library. Um, we have an evening book club this summer. They are going to be reading JFK's, um, or Stephen King's 112263, which is about JFK's assassination. But it also, it's a Stephen King novel, so there's also an element of some fantasy in there and sci-fi. So there's some time travel and a romance story that goes with that. The next book that our evening book club will be reading is the bestseller, The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. If uh, evenings aren't your style, we have an afternoon book club. This summer, our afternoon book club will be reading uh, Matt Haig's The Midnight Library. So this is uh, another, not time travel one, but they go and you have the opportunity to uh, see what paths your life might have let down. And then in July, they're gonna be reading Leave Only Footprints. Leave Only Footprints is actually a travel memoir and it is about um, by a, news journalist who after a messy relationship breakup they decide to try to travel to every national park within a calendar year so it's leave only footprints my acadia to zion journey through every national park we also have a mystery book club at the library that meets in the afternoons the last tuesday of the month and this summer they'll be reading reading wake and the moonstone and our fourth and final book club is a new one that we just started in, uh, with a partnership with Monday's Brewing Company. So we meet there once a month and each month we go ahead and discuss and decide our next month's book. So this month for June, we will be reading um, The Last Apothecary. And then in July, in June, we'll figure out what we're gonna read in July. So come out and join some library staff, grab a drink, eat a pepperoni roll, discuss a good book. We also have several other recurring programs for adults, including Bingo. Um, we're starting a new resume and cover letter class this summer. That'll meet every Wednesday, um, and that's by appointments with staff. We're also starting Monday matinee, so how Diane mentioned uh, John Wick Chapter 4. That'll be our June movie that we'll be watching. DVD releases don't work like they used to. A lot of times they keep movies in the theater or on streaming platforms socially to try to get more revenue from those. So haven't decided on a July movie, we'll have to see what's coming out then and what'll be good. Um, we also have our Passport Club. Our Passport Club, we travel to a different destination each month and this is with a virtual travel company called Beyonder. So in June, we are traveling to Stratford-upon-Avon, which is the birthplace of Shakespeare. And in July, we'll be going to Pompeii. These are live virtual walking tours. So a tour guide will be there on site, walking us through and showing us um, various th things on location. And we'll have the opportunity to interact with them. And then we also have a sit and fit, which is a, an adult, a mature adult um, exercise class. This summer, always brings about summer reading and our summer reading kickoff is Saturday, June 3rd. In 2020, we started incorporating adults into our summer reading program and we use an online platform called Beanstack. Um, we currently have a year long challenge going on, our A to Z reading challenge, where we encourage uh, folks to read through the alphabet with us. And then if you wanna do our summer reading kickoff or even if you participated in the bingo challenge we had in April with our Circe NEA Big Read grant, um, you can do multiple challenges simultaneously. Next, we have a really big, exciting program that's coming up, and that is the Life in Peters Township 20th Year Celebration. So 20 years ago, the library um, worked with the Heinz History Center to record uh, 20 oral histories, 20 or 21 oral histories. So this is um, Ed Liebarger's oral history right here. These are available for checkout from the library. And on Saturday, June 10th, they're gonna be inviting um, those who are still with us and honoring them for their contribution to local history, highlighting some more things in the archives. And it's also gonna be a celebration of the 50th uh, class reunion for 1973 PTA. Us. Every summer we also have some fun tie-dye. So this summer um, we'll have shirts available for a $5 donation and they say I'd rather be reading. So you can keep your shirt plain or you can uh, come to the library Wednesday June 28th from 3 to 7 p.m. and tie-dye a shirt. So here's one of our youth sizes. We'll have them available in youth and adults. Okay. 
A few other exciting adult things we have coming up. Um, another Swifty alert. If you did not get tickets or you did get tickets and you want to try out your uh, costume or outfit before the concert, we're going to have a Taylor Swift Eras Night at the library, which will include, you know, button making, some trivia, some fun games like pin the scarf on t uh, Jake. It's going to be a blast. Then we're also going to have an open mic night for teens and adults, blackout poetry, and then for Harry Potter's birthday, some Harry Potter trivia. Whew. Just a few more programs for adults. Um, there's a lot on this list, so you can read through it or find them all on our website. There is one. Um, I do want to spend a little bit of time talking about this even, uh, this today, right now. <laughs> and um, I brought an expert to share some information about it. So on Wednesday, June 14th, we have Share With Me with Jenny D. And today with me, we have Jenny D. Well, thank you for having me. I'm <laughs> so excited to be here. Yeah, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your podcast, Jenny? Oh, sure, absolutely. I started a podcast probably um, a year and a half, almost a year and a half ago. And I feel like I want to bring that to the community and I want to bring it to the township and show them you know what this class is about it's about me talking about why I'm sharing my story why I'm I want people to share their story and I want to talk to people about what stories do you think we should have I want to get their opinions I want to know you know what are we looking for what are people you know out there do they have a story do they want to share it with me I mean I just I really want to be open and honest with my listeners and I'm just so excited What's one of your favorite stories that you've been able to hear and then share on your podcast? You know what? One of my favorites, I have to go with my daughter. My daughter and I, we laugh, and she talks so much better than I do. <laughs> She's a musical theater major, so I feel like when she's talking, I'm like, oh, my gosh, she talks so much better than I do. <laughs> but we had so much fun, and we talked about things, and we just kind of rolled with it. And that's my whole dynamic with this podcast. There's no structure. It's just let's have a conversation. Let's just talk about real things, real people. And you're also going to be doing another program later this year. Um, could you tell us a little bit about that too? Sure, yes. I wanted to also help people that would like to do a podcast. I'm going to introduce how I started, how I learned, and I'll tell you what, it's all on YouTube. <laughs> That's basically where I learned, but I really want to focus on talking to everyone about it because I feel like, you know what, if you want to pursue your dream like I did, it's easy. It's easy. Thank you so much, Jenny. Um, we're going to go and look at some library resources now. So if you are interested in learning a new language but you don't trust the OWL, the library has a free online resource called uh, Mango Languages. Or if you are looking for your next great read, you have to check out Novelist Plus. Hello, and thank you for joining us today as we talk about Mango Languages and Novelist Plus from Peters Township Public Library. Peters Township Public Library is a gold star library, which is a, which is a part of the Pennsylvania Library Association PA Ford initiative. Libraries can help community members learn and grow by developing language skills and building on basic concepts. Let's talk about some of the highlights of Mango Languages. Mango has over 70 languages to help you stretch your brain, refresh your tongue, or prepare for vacation. To access Mango, you will need a PTPL library card and a device with internet access. Mango has some cool features I want to share. The big thing is you don't just get a big vocab list. You actually hear conversations and learn from them. The service is color-coded that helps you identify the words groups. You can also record your voice and compare it to a native speaker as practice. To use Mango, go to our website and hover over the Resources tab. Navigate to the Classes and Continuing Education section and click there. Next, go down to click Mango Languages. It will expand to this box. Click the Mango Languages in red to go to the website. You can log in or if you have never signed in before, click Sign Up. Create a profile by inputting your email address, PTPL card number, and a password, then push Sign Up. Mango has a data consent form where they inform you that they will not sell your information to third parties. You can also access Mango Languages as a guest by just inputting your library card number. This will not save your progress though. Once you're in Mango, here's what you'll see. You can select from the most popular languages, search for one, or click the See All option. Here's a list of all the languages Mango offers. There are over 70 including Cherokee, Italian, French, and even Pirate for all ye land lovers. Here's what the homepage looks like for each language. 
Near the yellow arrow, you can click the blue Start Learning button. There's also a daily review. Near the green arrow is a placement test, which helps assess your skills because maybe you took that language a while ago. A tutorial should open up the first time you open a lesson, but you can click the See Tutorial near the orange arrow to repeat it again. Near the green and blue buttons, you'll see the goals for each lesson. Finally, click the blue Start button next to the purple arrow to begin the lesson. You'll hear a conversation that scrolls for a while. Click the blue repeat button next to the orange arrow to hear it again. You can also scroll through the conversations. When you're finished, click the next to proceed. You can read segments of each chapter and take a short squiz to test your reading comprehension. Here's what it looks like after you've finished a reading activity. You can go over answers and vocabulary used. Some languages will have specialty units. For example, the French course has a specialty section for wines and cheeses. The Explore tab for Mango is in the upper left of the Mango interface. There is also a tool section with a language translator. Just type a word in English and convert it to whichever language you'd like. There's also a Mango app. It's free in the Apple and Android app stores. We do suggest making an account via the library's website first and then logging into the app. It is a free service. Um, the library pays for access for it. After you find it in your store and you download and get it, this is an example of what it looks like once you open the app. You'll see it's very similar to the website. Near the yellow arrow are all the different units and near the bottom right near the green arrow is the start button. You'll see the same conversation and grammar tools that the web version had. and You can simply click the blue start button to begin. Where the yellow arrow is pointing are your play, record, and repeat buttons. You can also toggle between actual meaning and literal meaning at the top. And if you ever need a refresher and want instructions, please visit our website, click on resources, and the tutorial listed next to each resource. Here's a picture of what that looks like. Now let's look at Novelist. Novelist can be accessed through the resources tab by clicking on books and audiobooks. For all of our resources, you can also click the All Resources A to Z option. Scroll down until you find Novelist Plus and explain the area. Click the red words Novelist Plus. If you're on a library computer or the library Wi-Fi, you don't have to sign in. If you're accessing this from home, it will ask for your library barcode number as your patron ID. Novelist Plus is the premier database for rec reading recommendations, available through libraries around the world presenting fiction, nonfiction, audiobooks, and expert recommendations, reviews, articles, lists, and more. At the top of the page, there's options to browse by different areas, find popular pages, and answer frequently asked questions. Under the recommended reading list, you can find fiction and nonfiction titles, as well as search by age level. Some fun features include the For Fans of section. You can select here and find popular TV shows, movies, and fandoms and find things similar to it. Novelist Plus is also connected to the PTPL Wagon Network, so if you view a book, you will be able to see if it's available in our system. You can also search for books based on moods. On the main page, you will see some popular moods listed and then an option to try your own appeal mixer. I can search for an intensifying paste book with a world building storyline and complex characters. and find some options for reading. Once you select a book, you can view the genres, themes, and other writing information. You can also view some reviews and see if it's won any awards. From here, you can also search for similar books and read alikes. 
So you can always search for a book you've thoroughly enjoyed. Like this Sherlock Holmes retelling where our lead detective is actually Charlotte Holmes. You can see the reviews for it and access those read-alikes. So this is a great tool if there's a book you thoroughly enjoyed and you want to find more books like it. Novelist is a great tool to help you find your next read. Wow, Diane, after seeing all that info about library resources and library clubs, I, I, there's stuff on there that I haven't even heard of and I work at the library. Well, we know you're back in your office with your stacks of books, mumbling Dewey Decimal numbers to yourself. Sydney and I are out in the real war world dealing with the patrons. Well, those people in the real world, the public, they should stop into the library soon. And we'll be back on TV in a couple of months with another edition of Booked Up. In the meantime, let us help you get booked up with a new library program, club, or book. See you at the library. Thanks for joining us on Booked Up. The Peters Township Public Library is open Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Friday and Saturday, 9 to 4. This summer, the library is closed on Sunday, June 24th for Community Day. Make sure you stop up and see us. And July 3rd and 4th for the holiday. But don't worry, we're always open online at ptlibrary.org. We hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.